Welcome to another video. This one's going to be Jort versus Weasel. We're going to start out here on Nova Assault. We have the uh, Trade Federation mirror matchup, and like we said many times before, this map is a con well abundant with uh, Rancors and uh, Nova. As you can see, well, there's a great uh, flock or herd of Cadu there. Maybe worth getting on. Each one's like a hundred food, but you know when there's so many of them, that's decent. It's a nice shore fish here in this little pond as well. So there can be uh, the, the map's a bit of a wild card, really. With what can spawn on it, I suppose. You get all these cool little ponds. Sometimes, sometimes they're worth it. Sometimes they're not. And then you might have loads of rancors near you. And as I said, we've never seen anyone like lure all the rancors, but I imagine that everyone's just got like some sort of agreement in place not to do that because it's incredibly toxic. And looking at the food on the map, there's a couple of nerfs, great deal of berries, and I think it's mainly the berries people are going to be relying on. And it being only a couple of nerfs, it's unlikely that anyone's going to really be able to justify slamming down a nursery, unless they're uh, intending to lose the game. So a lot of that early carbon would, in this instance, you can get away with a carbon process probably as TF, since you've got a little bit extra carbon early on. But uh, your next thing should really be a food processor so that you can eat off the berries. And it's going to take a lot of workers to keep the workers going off the berries. Um, so it's going to be a slower sort of T1. Which uh, should be my cue to speed this up a bit because I don't want to be trapped here talking about absolutely nothing because nothing's going on. You can just stare at some rancors for a little bit. Aren't they majestic? Long arms. Got that Ivan Drago reach. Big roars. Would kind of like to see the caddies eating, I suppose, because it's you know a little bit of a food diversity here. God damn! So food processors are down. People will be munching berries now, and it's just going to be a really, really slow haul. And I might even just turn up the speed just a little bit more. Let's talk about holocrons. There's typically five on the map, and there they all are. Good talk. But yeah, not too sure what uh, the plans would be here for this. I suppose that you could somewhat wall. Being TF though, you can't put down any prefab shelters to walls, so it's going to be light walls. A little bit of a distance between them, but not really too much. So if they do both go troopers, there's a lot of opportunities for like hills, standing on hills, try to get the elevation advantage in a fight. Just because the, the centre is just all crazy hills and Nova here in the lower area. But yeah, it doesn't really look like anyone could just like very easily wall or anything like that, so they both might feel inclined to rush. I do see some workers wandering over here. He has aggroed the uh, Rancor scout from this party here that's defending this Cadus. Maybe he's a shepherd, I'm not too sure. But he's slowly getting bashed down by the uh, TF droids here. So that'll be Jort heading over here. I don't even know if I named the players at the start of this. I can't even remember. They've got Weasel in the red, Jort in the orange. It's just that interesting of a T1. But yeah, Jort's going to eat the Cadus, which is you know going to be a kind of a huge advantage here, I guess. They are a little bit of a pain in the arse when you, you weigh in the fact that like when you've got three workers on them, that's more ca carrying capacity than the actual maximum amount. A lot of these are walking quite close to this food processor, so there shouldn't be too much like distance issues. I do want these guys to not be idle, and maybe the food processor to finish here. Going to need a bit of a manual intervention here, or they're going to make this trip all the way back, and that's a bit of a blunder here, Jort. Uh, why? Oh, that's awful. So yeah, this is going to turn out to be a little bit more inefficient than the farming, I would say. And it needn't be so, I think, if the food processor was finished and these guys weren't making such a crazy trip. But, it's going to take a long time for this like advantage to translate anyway, just because of the nature of this T1, so there are room for errors like that. Because I don't think it's really kicking into like the too much to the amount of carbon that's going on. As you can see, the players are off to T two, so like draw a little bit behind, but like the uh, the carbon that we save from this is it's not really going to translate until maybe into the start of T two or something like that. 
So the game's going to be quite even in terms of the infrastructure that they've got by the time they hit T2, so the troop centre and the power core. And if they're lucky, maybe the second troop centre. Look at the, the old worker counts. It's quite even, really. If we take into account that Weasel's had been teching longer, so he's not building a worker there. 28 to 29. So the first troopers starting to build, troop research is getting done, really just about even in that regard as well. Weasel's done his research, whereas George just built some troopers as he's going up because he's going up a bit later, but he'll be doing his research now. And I think he might be the one quicker to do a bit of aggression here. But we can see that Weasel sniffed out the, the caddies, and it's probably pretty obvious if you scouted them earlier, and then you just look in the fog of war, you can see the corpses of the animals. So he's going to send his trooper over here to harass early, and he's probably going to get one of these workers, but Jort will arrive. And he will defend his territory here as such. And he has a little bit more troops out on the map just now, but not for too long. Weasel rallying over here to the hill, where you can just sort of camp. And Jort, if he wants to get to his opponent, is actually going to aggro all these rancors. And at this point, in for a penny, in for a pound, he might as well just drag them all to his opponent. And that'll be a pain in the ass. Definitely have to pull the troops back, but it shouldn't be too much of a hassle, because there'll be enough DPS to probably kill off these rancors. And some of them, maybe the troopers are just a little bit too fast, because a lot of them are actually dropping the aggro. You can see the double turrets getting slammed down here. Jort getting in. The turret's going up just in time though, and this can reach this side. I don't think it can reach this side though if he stood his troopers here. Whereas in the meantime, Weasel's going to be looking to counterattack himself, but Jort obviously got on top of him a bit quicker. Did manage to drag two, three of those rancors into the base, proving a bit annoying, but Weasel intercepting some of the reinforcements here in the centre of the map. And he's going to get onto these workers that are extremely exposed just for these few Kadu that are remaining. And this is a bit of a blunder on Jort's part because he's not prepared to defend them here. And look at how many workers have gone down. That's about six and then that previous one from earlier. Or the five rather in the previous one from earlier makes it six. So six workers. And I don't think too many workers really went down here for Weasel. But he's still got these rancors to deal with. Jort in the meantime, he's got a lot of workers on carbon but not really too much food income. The berries have ran out now, and with the caddies, you know, no longer in his possession. They seem to be about finished anyway. He's going to have to get a lot more farms down just to keep everything going. As you can see that army that George sent out while he was being raided at the uh, food processor. Colliding into Weasel's base, but he's definitely got enough here, and he seems to be getting a bit of a flank on here on the higher part of the mountain. And intercepting a lot of these units, and of course one of the Rancors is just still being annoying. He goes down there. But he's got Jort on the back foot now as he retreats back to his base. He does have a few more units that might intercept this guy, these guys on the left hand side. Or maybe try to cut these ones off. Or he's just going to sneak over to his opponent and maybe get onto the farms and cause a bit of harassment there. But there's not too many troops now for Jort at home. And a huge army of weasels is heading to his front door. His base is pretty well laid out though when you look at it. Uh, there's only a few sort of channels in, and the carbon's pretty protected. Bit of a hill there. Very easy for him to keep his sort of troops there. And this army going to be intercepting into George's troops here. He doesn't want to rally them into this, because there's a bit of a hill that they can sit on, and they do have the superior numbers. That's unfortunate for those two. And on the other side of the map, the units are not quite making it to Weasel's base. He seems to be very uh, overly taxed, or tasked here, at, at home, trying to defend. But his farms are quite vulnerable to just being shot here, and that would definitely be the play. That guaranteed damage, each one that goes down, 50 carbon. And a few of the workers going back to work here and they're getting gunned down as well. You see Jort and Weasel taking the trade. But Jort doesn't really have enough and Weasel's definitely getting the upper hand here and these units are still not really doing any sort of counter-attack at the moment when they could be on top of the farms here. And the longer that he gives Weasel, the longer he has, well, to just get these units up at the farms to defend this. And even with just like half this amount, it'll be a lot easier to defend. So George definitely pooling behind now. Have a quick look at the old worker count. 47, that's definitely going to be in Weasel's favour for sure after 33. So he's pulled ahead by 14 workers. And the longer that this goes on, the more of that uh, advantage is going to translate. 
farms are very exposed though, and for Weasel's point of view, he just needs to keep attacking, keep Jar on the defensive. Now you can operate freely and express that worker differential and get into T3 first and overwhelming his opponent with the stronger units. Now he's still looking for some angles in here. Maybe try to kill off another farm, kills a worker there that was farming. And Jorah's really going to be in a bit of a struggle here. You can see that his economy is very imbalanced at the moment with all this carbon. He's already got his two buildings down. So there's just been too many workers on carbon, really. Not enough on food. And I think his opponent should be thinking about T3 very soon, I would have thought. He's got an awful lot of farmers, but... Alas, not quite there. some walls here with some extra workers on ore which you can absolutely afford and these units are still just being forgotten about by Jorah. So I'll just chill in there and what martial advantage he does have he's expressing by taking down these farms. Weasel off to T3 now he's got the resources for that and he's gonna be able to afford quite a strong T3 push I think maybe like double mech factory with some war center upgrades. He's a very decent standing army of troopers as well, so you could absolutely upgrade those to heavy and get that range upgrade upgrade for them and get them up to about what seven range. Turn on the other hand, not really doing too much. Again, these troops are still just sitting here. So I think he must have forgotten about them. Try to take a trade here, but not enough and just losing so many troops. For free. And this huge amount is just going to go around killing farms, making sure he stays in his base, and then T3 will kick in, and that'll probably be the end of it. We'll make factory down. Space for uh, air base as well. Instantly down there. Seeing the upgrades for the troops. Definitely tons of them. Then we go get the range at least. There's the heavy trooper as well. And it's range here. Three or four strike knights queued up. And he can just sit on top of these hills as well with the superior count that he's got. Doesn't need to take too much of a trade really. Could just wait for his upgrades, but he will eventually be able to just shoot this power core. And GG call by Jort there, so we'll head off into the next game. Ah, Rebels. And it's Savannah. Uh, there's a unethical pond right there. God damn. Some cheeky, cheeky shorefish. <clears throat> On the other side of things, not only anything, sort of Savannah base. But this looks like a very easy wall base as well. And Weasel definitely getting the uh, the upper hand here in the map generation. But as we can see, there's some nerfs that can go into the nursery. Four or so, maybe six, eight. If we can see some extra ones. Another oh, four there. Maybe that's his lot. So we've got two Jewbacks and a couple of Flumps and some nice Cadu that are just sort of locked in this area as well. You just have a nice sort of food processor here. Eat the berries, eat the Cadus, eat the Flumps. Oh, Gucci. And then you can get an extra food processor down here for a bit of shore fish as well. Banging. A lot, a lot of food all the way into T2 there for a weasel. Ah, oh, some awkward uh, dewback placement with a tree in the way there. There's a bit of food. There's a nice pond here as well for George, so I'd say it's, it's okay, it's just it's very easy for Weasel to sort of cheese T3, I think. With some prefab shelters and some light walls. Even Famba's walking past this command center. The dream. A paradise here on Savannah. Just need to get through the old T1 and see what's going on in this game. They do have nursery, so we you know Mounties are back on the menu here. Oh dear, what's going on? Oh no. I am not sure if three workers can manage this, can they? 
Hopefully they don't start bumping. Oh, they're doing a good... Well, he's decided he's not putting anything back in the, the processor anymore, is he? There it is. Pain. Bullied out of working. So, Jort down a worker. Prefab shall I? What food processors? It wants the EB spam, that's for sure. It's an extra 700 food, basically. And there's the troop center. I definitely want to see Mounties here. And I think Mounties is a really good decision for Jort here, just looking at the map generation, because it's going to strike quicker than you could actually wall. However, I mean, he's not as effective in a map that you know you would have to farm in, but you know they'll do some damage here. I think it worse that maybe just end up a bit even. But my God, the bumping that's going on with these workers, really slowing things down. Weasel on his way to T two. Something like he's actually done a very good job to wall very quickly. So I wonder if Jort will get through here, because he's not done the uh, the edge here that he needs to do with light wall. But I definitely slow him down a bit, all this carbon. I, I'm sorry, do you believe this is walled? Because you've done light walls here. It's like the stress of playing a tournament just make people just unable to finish walls. Oh no. That's a very slow mount, he's actually. He's had this troop center up for a while. One running in here. I think he was maybe a weight wall, yeah. Bad timing. You can try and get it up a little bit, I suppose. But uh, mounties will kill this really quickly with this little HP. The whole benefit to this against mounties is being able to stand on the other side and repair it. And. Turret going down here, which is absolutely needed, but what you kind of want is a turret that's in range of the command center, so the command center can then guarantee the turret, and then the turret can guarantee everything else, right? Otherwise, the workers are just going to have to bash down these mounties. So it's on Jort here to see how much of an advantage he can gain with just these mounties, and how quickly he can get his T3 himself. And he's about halfway there in terms of his food. Weasel, obviously has pretty much more than enough food, he just needs a Nova, maybe use a spaceport here, since he's not Nova, there we go, on his way now, but it's a lot of idols here, it looks like the uh, economy is shut down a little bit, these guys should really just be on these carbon patches to make sure he can get his power core down, and then he needs to take whatever lead he's going to have in tech time and translate it into the advantage here. Which you could maybe do, you know, with a strike mech, a fighter or so, and just see if he can pick his opponent apart. The mounties are cleared up, but you know, he's, he's suffered a bit of casualties to his eco. But he'll definitely be ahead in tech time, as you can see there. Just so we can maybe have a quick spy on the economy stats and see. A lot more food, but a lot less carbon. So we'll see what happens here. Power core going down now, and a lot more workers going on to Nova, so he doesn't tend to make some fighters, I would say. Unsure whether it's going to be double air base or not. But I think you would definitely want to throw in a strike mech here and there as well, just to do a bit of scouting, and get out there quickly, and cause a bit of turmoil if there's just anti air troopers standing around. Undefended, as they would be in this instance, because he's not slammed down any turrets or anything like that. He's going to go for double air base here. <laughs> Which might peter out and not do enough damage, and you know, this is going to a very even game now. Jor onto T3 now, and you know, you could get air, you could get uh, anti air turrets as well, which completely cancel those units out. You see, he's trying to uh, diversify his T2 units in terms of defense. I wonder if he's making an MD as well. No, but he is going to get the anti-air turret. 
Hope you want to get one here at the ore as well. Must be a good future CC location too. So it wouldn't feel like too much of a waste. And um, we'll have a quick look at how Weasel's getting on with his fighters. We're rallying a few over into the pond here. Second command center being dropped. We're going to gain back some of those workers that he lost. And uh, yeah, just not too much aggression from both players. Maybe respecting each other too much here. Looks like a Jew back was sort of missed here by Joe. But he's got his anti-air turret, so he'll feel quite confident with his anti-air troopers, his two fighters here. They're doing a little bug thing though, where they like invert themselves. It does a uh, sneak past Weasel here. He's going to try and out-micro the turret a little bit. don't know if this is really worth the mechanics. Kills a worker there, but then he's going to lose all of his fighters. So the answer to that probably being no. Sometimes you just got to accept there's a turret there and you know look for the bits of the base that don't have a turret. Because the more stress you can cause your opponent by flying around and make them feel like they're not safe is actually worth more than the damage that you would do just killing one or two workers. Often, when you both get to T3 early, a lot of it comes down to how much resources can you force your opponent to misallocate in terms of mech destroyers, um, anti-air turrets, etc. Because then you can then use that to pull ahead by having you know one, two more command centers than them early on and getting a worker lead. And then later on when you want to do something a bit more permanent in terms of aggression, like setting up a forward or you know pushing with some like mech destroyers and stuff that's going to cause a lot more uh, problem for them because they're not going to have the same level of his economy to you know match you in terms of those units and when the losses start to accrue on both sides you should definitely pull ahead in that regard providing you're not making some catastrophic error a lot, a lot of workers on over here in a tri triple air base approach so not just doubling down, he's tripling down here. And second air base for Jor. I'm uh, not too sure about like the triple air base here. I think you'd probably get enough off two air base and there's gonna be some lapses in the production here. It's kinda reserved for like big nerf map. I mean big big nerf map. But he's gonna try and use his numbers here to bully, but you know Jort's catching up, especially with the ones that he lost for free at the turret there. And Jork coming in, taking the trade here, and a lot of fighters just going down for free. And Jork prepared to just chase him and absolutely rout this force. A very good return trade there for Weasel. And, you know, given the casualties that he suffered earlier, that's actually a win for him, really. And if he can go one for one with Jork's forces when he's got an extra air base, that'd be good for him. He should technically pull ahead. But both players look like they're doing okay in terms of getting command centers, boosting their economies. Um, Weasel maybe might feel a little bit restricted by his own walls here. You see, so sort of branching out a little bit. So it's going to have a lot more space, particularly in the back here for like farms, command centers, and stuff. You see, he's laying those down around that food processor here. Interesting heavy weapons factory, if he's maybe going to get some anti-air mobiles. Maybe rally a pummel, something like that. Both very good options here. Get some airing clear. We're going to test the waters here with a, a raiding force. You see Weasel very confident actually just defending with his own air here. No turrets as such. And he definitely gets the first few volleys off there against Jort's air, so Jort forced to run up to the top of the map here, trying to evade the rest of his forces, and Weasel does give up a little bit. And Jort can just hang out there and maybe wait for an opportunity to come back in and do some damage. The pummel's been made. Interesting stuff. You know, fighters are pretty crap against like T3 uh, heavy weapons. Not so much like their uh, T4 counterparts. And he's managed to get those fighters home. We flew over those prefabs, but didn't get intercepted. I'm going to have a quick look at the old worker counts. We've got 56 for Weasel here, and 50 for Jork. So Weasel sort of maintaining a lead here. I 
Your temple. Holocrons are definitely a good differential here on this map. I don't know if this one's accessible or not. Um, I'll assume not. I'll keep the small trees mod on the, the base game here on my PC. Just use this one for the, the videos because it's got that more uh, authentic old GBG look. Box formation with so many units, that's an interesting one. Uh, he's going straight into... Uh, he's like on patrol here, not paying attention. He's lost quite a lot there. Killed a lot of workers, but... Not really got the same lead he had with his, uh, his air. Kind of both players being a bit too passive here. I mean, you're a bit too passive in a matchup like this. It's, it's actually going to come down to... Man who go T4 first win game. Because air is such a strong and volatile unit with those upgrades. I mean, you basically double their HP with the shields. It's regening health. And as we say that, Jort is man who got T4 first. And Weasel just going to pack it in there. Wow. Which, hmm. I'm not too sure about that. You've got a lot of air. I think a bit of air, some static defense. I mean, you could sell your res and tech up as well. I don't know. That seems like a bit of a premature quit, but it's up to you. So we'll go into game three, that being 1-1 one, one now. And we're here on, well, looks like desert. Yes, it is. Finishing things off with a dessert. Eight nerfs, 12 probably, 16. I imagine. Kind of all. The, what are the spawns, man? They're right up against the edge of the map there. That's a bit of crap. I hope he finds them. Dewback as well. Just sort of hidden up there. A couple of Rontos, two Dewbacks. Decent amount of food on this map for both players. George just missing his Banthas there. He must see them. No? Thanks. Oh, the anxiety of nerves. Quick lure here for Weasel. The same for Jork, getting that Ronto over. I say so far it looks like both players are having a bit of a mare. Let's find four of them, but is he ever going to find these ones up here? Because that is a really crap spawn. Looks like he might look. Oh, that is grim. Can we have a check here? Okay, so, you still not found these four either, though. How are you doing this? You've gone past these twice. That's crazy. I went around this way, and they went around this way. I'm not sure what Weasel's doing over here. He needs to find the rest of his. Maybe I think they've been stolen. A lot of workers here on Carbon for George. It might be another early troop center into some mounties. Just the five or so on food here. And the nursery is being enough to keep the worker production going as well. You can see up to 200 carbon there. Looks like Jorts found them. Weasel did just go up there. I just want not want to tell his opponent where they are. Just got to keep them where they are. Pretty difficult place to find. And troop center down. Let's see if we queued up a uh, mountain already. Yep. Q 
queuing them up while the power core is not up yet, just to get that little bit extra percentage. So maybe going straight off to the carbon here, but you know, in the nature of these maps, you're not too far behind getting your own troop center and all that, so might be a trooper recruit or maybe a couple out to match the mounty as well. Oh no. Very lucky he didn't run back. That is a patient Jew back. A Jew back that didn't want to go back. Mount me on its way here. Be snaking round to the carbon. As we said, there might be a couple of trooper recruits here, but it looks like he's uh, not really queued them up. He's only got the one. But fortunately for him, Jort is not actually meleeing down the trooper recruit as of yet, and he gets time to get a second one out here and wins that trade with no real loss. Jordan is getting to see what's going on here. Getting the trooper upgrade, the range. Does kill off a worker. And let's see here what Weasel can do with the lead. Oh, it's not much of a lead, is it? Jordan almost on his way to T2 now as well. Forgetting about his wrong throw. There's two farms down when he should be eating this. Not really excusable. That's 400 food. 400 food delivered straight to your door. Delivery style. Wanna be getting that. Scout may be here to be annoying and shoot the worker when it goes for it. As you can see there. Th this Ronto though. You're not interested. This guy's been really annoying here. I get shot at by the troopers though. And he loses it. Uh, no worker casualty, and he does get that food home safely. At the same time, trooper just snuck in here doing a bit of scouting, almost killing that worker. And weasel just sort of clamouring to defend as such here. Really big annoying hill up here. Look at all this Nova. Was this all of his Nova? Yikes. This is really bad later on, like T3, if you get forward. But God damn, look at this. Deny so much. At least the ore is safe, but damn. Whereas Weasel's is, you know, sort of back facing. A lot more normal looking. It's a matchup where Nova would be very important as well, both being Republic. Jort on his way with his uh, superior numbers, I would say, in terms of the troopers. But we see Weasel's getting a bit of an elongated wall here. There's a little bit of a danger, maybe, of troops. I'm not too sure they can reach or not. Maybe just barely can shoot some of the workers on the car. Jort and Weasel exchanging, tro exchanging troops here around this cliff face. But with the superior numbers here, Jort definitely going to come out ahead. But it's going to take a while to get round here into the base of Weasel. And a few more of the troops. Oh, there's actually a door here. I never noticed this. Oh. On flank, but not the way you want to flank patrol for sure, because he's only put one of the flanks in the combat. The others maybe spawn killed a couple of the troop centers, but not the best trade here for Jort, I think, when he had a, a decent sort of lead in numbers. Got things evening out here. Jort just rallying straight onto the top of this hill as he gets this wall built on the left hand side. Uh, not really too many entry points to his base here, maybe wants to get a few more prefab shelters out here, like a bit of a labyrinth, just so you can see troops trying to make a beeline for his, uh, his economy. So you can feel a bit safer about going straight to the top of that hill. Uh, I think you could probably, if you've got a bit of a lead here, get a turret or something like that and knock this carbon off. Even if, if you got on top of this as well, you could put a turret at the troop centers. It's going to be a bad trade potentially for Jory here, just because he patrolled a bit late. You can see there's a very good volley arc there in these units. Yeah, so Weasel are going to come out ahead in that trade. And turning into a little bit of just like senseless trading with troops here. Not really any strategic sense to it. Kind of the weasel's benefit here, I think, when he wants to just sort of defend, given how long his uh, walls have to be. Got a 
need a lot more farms, I think, for both players. Just to think about getting that tech level 3. Getting those upgrades as well from the war center. And Jork, gonna take another trade here. So I miss patrolling there and we're missing the fight proper. And Weasel seeing this sort of weakness from this army and having a much bigger one. He's gonna patrol now and make things uncomfortable for our Jort as he heads towards his base and as we said that Nova is always forward facing right so he's gonna to have to sort of sit on top of it to defend it. Are you trying to get some prefab shellers to maybe stop the uh, trooper standing behind his carbon doing any sort of damage there. He's gonna be on top of this hill when he starts taking this trade if he goes for these workers here on the Nova. Let's kill one, kills two, but it's not gonna be a good trade for his troops here. And you're gonna lure them out the hill and then maybe take the trade again. And we've got a nice gate now for our Jort, so not really any way into his base unless there's some sort of hole here, which you know could happen with hills and all that. You never truly know if it's walled. It's surprising that he's never found these nerfs. Since the workers are very close now with the uh, carbon gathering. So we've got Jedi Temple, Spaceport Mech Factory being dropped here by Weasel. He's got a lot of space that he's made for himself in this area that he's walled in. Definitely some gaps here for sure though. And uh, Jork going to make it to T3. And how's Weasel going on the other end? He's just started T3. Might not feel the compulsion to throw the towel in quite yet. Might give it a chance to get to T3 this time. As he heads across the map, he's maybe going to look for a trade just to sort of stall any sort of aggression coming his way with those you know powerful T3 units, you know, like fighters, strike max. And we're going to see what George's doing with his upgrades. I'm going to take this trade here, and I think Weasel's definitely got the better volley in the arc here, even if there is a little bit of an elevation buff for some of the units. George was getting range, but maybe he wants to just cancel that now that he's lost all of his troopers. Will come in handy later, you know, being Republic and troopers being, you know, one of their sort of main units. But this fighter is just gonna push these units away because they can't look up. There's a few anti air troopers that are maybe gonna try and uh, intercept this as it's on its way across the map, chasing these down. But he's losing a lot of these troopers now. The Weasel himself is gonna hit T3. And he seems to be pulling his anti air troopers back now. A couple of strike mechs out, a couple of fighters out for Jort, but he's not really done any sort of aggression to the economy here for Weasel. And this Padawan from the temple that was made earlier, we're going to look for some of these holocrons. The fighter sees that. He's going to try and fight the strike mech of the Padawan, he is. He's got the troopers that are going to help out a little bit. Probably in the uh, strike max interest to just run away. This is not worth microing. A lot of health for the Padawan here, and not too many upgrades, well, none at all for the strike max. It's kind of just going to lose it. You see Weasel again into the triple airbase. This just seems kind of a lot for uh, the economies that we'd have right now. I don't know what this Padaban's done, but he's awoken the aggro of the, both the Scouts and the Jawas. I'm guessing this is a bit of a, a misclick here from Jort, where he's built all these strike mechs. Some misallocated carbon, for sure. I'd have preferred that build time to be strike mechs. But, uh, a little bit surprised to see him making so many strike mechs with no war center upgrades at all, and he can definitely afford them, right? He's even got a war center, so I don't know if it's just nerves, he's just forgetting, but it's definitely going to cut their damage output and make these fighters even more effective against them when they really shouldn't be effective against them at all, providing there's a bit of armor. And they're gonna come across here. Jort does have his own air. His anti-air turret finishes just in time, and Weasel not paying attention too much. And a few free shots gonna be happening for the uh, Jort fighters here. And they're gonna have that elevation bonus as well, which apparently does apply to air. These strike mechs looking for some sort of angle in here, but 
getting sort of gunned down on the way as they take more and more damage than they should. Please upgrade them. Why are you making more scouts? You need to calm down. Ah, he's found his nerves. It's a yub nub moment right there. Four extra nerves. And for the game to feel a bit even and then you get four nerfs, you know, it must be just a spectacular feeling. It looks like things have sort of just evened out a bit. And I've saved all these workers heading across this Nova. Jort maybe just going to be looking for that tech level four again. Get that air upgrade, get that lead on to Weasel here. I'm going to look at Weasel. It's got a decent amount of farms, could use a bit more. And here's the <laughs> scouts and strike mechs with their no upgrades. I'm gonna meet the old mech destroyer here though. I'm not gonna get too much damage at all. And I think both players are just gonna maybe try and get to T4, but it looks like Jort is quicker. Manages equal a little bit better, I think he's maybe got a couple more farms, or he did. There's an anti-air turret in the middle of the map. Maybe just going to rally his units there and use that as a sort of staging post. Try and control Weasel, keep his units back. He's going to build this heavy weapons factory as well. Maybe he can bait Weasel into not going T4 here and just making too many units. Not too sure. He does have the res for T4 though. The research centre are almost about done. Now, Jort will beat him to T4, but will he quit this time? Because he's on his way. All he really would need to do is just hide his air. He's got more air bases as well. He's got three air base to two air base. It's not the end of the world. Can do it. George should be hitting T4 very soon. Weasel is going to stay in the game this time. Let's have a look at what George's doing with his money. So he's going to be getting shields, making a few more fighters. Up at the research center, up at the old war center. He's got this little bit of a uh, contain going. I think what's important to note is he's sort of locked down the second sort of nowhere here. third Nova. Oh, yeah. It's not going to pay off for a while actually. But he's definitely got presence on the map. Extra res for him. And there's the T44 Weasel. Who definitely has a few more fighters I think. Maybe you'd like to see Jark going a bit more for the Holocrons being Republic here because you're going to get a lot more out of them. He's definitely got control of those. These troopers have just been abandoned here on the side of the map, wait, biding their time. And here comes the air from Jort. But there's fast fire tech for Weasel, and he just cleans it out very quickly. Jort really being a bit overzealous with his air there and Weasel going to be heading out into the map now and the question is how long until he gets shields 80% so 20% to go and this could be catastrophic for Jork so it's going to take him a very long time to you know, get a lot of these back just being on double air base you can see he's building them, he's trying to get advanced anti-air turrets as well but he might suffer a lot of losses here and all his Nova workers and a lot of them are going to have Nova in their hands as they're gunned down in the streets here by these Republic gunships. And what turned into, well turned from an advantage to being a major disadvantage for him here, losing all those fighters. Really should have been more careful. Watch the farm weasel actually turning away now rather than just like 
staying on top of him here. And not going for his carbon here, which would have been really bad for him, because there's a lot of workers there with just nowhere to go. I'm going to catch these guys that are sort of pilfering this ore from the centre of the map. And he does have this fortress up, maybe he can get some cannons here, keep them safe with the mech destroyers and start chipping away here at the, uh, the shield generator. The advanced turrets have finished for Jor and they're going to help contain his opponent here. And there's the cannon we talked about, maybe he can get that in there and do some damage. Where's Jort's ear? A couple of fighters over here on the right hand side. A couple of cannons, a shield generator, power core going down here, a few units out. So it might come down to the actual ground units here in this Republic matchup. There's still a lot of holocrons to be grabbed up, which, you know, there's not really an excuse for not getting those as Republic. I'm thinking maybe Weasel's got two here. Should be some nice, you know, Nova income there. 120. And these fighters are going to do a good job against these uh, partially upgraded strike max. Let's see what Jort wants to do with his forward here. A scoop of the uh, scoop of the war right prepared. And Weasel coming in here, doing some damage. Amobiles and the turrets doing all right, and this is. A couple of turrets to hide inside as well, and this is just not good trade here for Weasel. Not too sure what he's actually struggling with. Maybe he might bring something else, but I'm not really seeing any other opportunities in the map. Drop pressuring here as he can. And the weasel ahead on the uh, Republic Trooper tech. Your orders, plus two, they just need that plus four, really. So that's the upgrade that's the most important for the repeaters. Given their wild rate of fire. But a slight bit of passivity out of both players here, not too much micro going on. They're really struggling to get their economies to look like a, a late game eco. See a lot of the workers moving around and stuff. I think maybe Weasel needs a bit more command centers. I only really counting too. It'd be really difficult for him if he got raided with light air. As I said, that. This fire is going to come across here to this carbon maybe. At the same time, got Jorts sort of testing the waters here with his cannon firing onto the shield generator. But as we see, there's a lot of repeater troopers here with those plus four damage upgrades, and they're gonna do quite well against these mechs. Gonna want strike mechs or your own troopers against this. And the cannons are gonna be surging forward now for Weasel, who's set to knock this forward down. And he's got a lot of these fighters as well to bring in here if he gets these uh, turrets knocked down. And John, on the other hand, doesn't really have a lot lacking a bit in the unit department. And I'm thinking, but he's just going to take the, all of this down without too much of a hassle. And these units haven't really gotten up to much when they could be devastating this carbon economy here. At the same time, Jort losing a lot of his workers here in between the bases as these fighters raid him. And these cannons just going to town here. And it looks like he's patrolled his fighters in, but they're just shooting at some prefab shelters. 
which is going to give him time to get his fighters across here and take the trade. And it's all looking a bit bleak for Jor here. <clears throat> Trying to get a makeshift sort of forward up here, another turret. But these troopers are just going to walk right up and knock all this down, I think. He's trying to get his own trooper upgrades, but you know, he's just very behind. And Weasel just walking into the shield and just gunning everything down. Well, I think that might really be it. I'm not seeing an out here for Jort. Not really any tricks up the Republic sleeve here that you could utilize to take this army down. Other than matching it. Command center goes down, and all these cannons, with nothing to stop them, are just going to knock these buildings down all very quickly. Looks like he's trying to get another forward here on the right hand side. Bit of production. Some strike mechs out to kill off these troopers, but there's an awful, awful lot of units here. And even the cannons could just shoot at these strike mechs as well and do quite good damage to them. Some Mounties running in. A few of the Legacy Mech Destroyers there to help out. These fighters try to clean up these cannons, but... It's all just too little too late, I think. And GG called by Jort there. So Weasel gonna take that series 2-1 to one there. Would have liked to see him maybe play out that Savannah game a bit further, but... Well played to both players, uh, Weasel takes it, so if you like that, leave a like on the, on the video, leave a comment if you want, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more GBG content in the future, and if you want to join the uh, GBG Discord, you'll find a link to that down below as well, and I'll see you guys in the next video, take care, bye bye.